Hello everyone, welcome back to my another tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn what is mean average precision evaluation metric for object detection. I will use it for my YOLO v3 tutorial series. So in this tutorial, you'll learn what is this metric, how we use it to evaluate the performance of an object detection model. I will cover in detail what is a map, how to calculate it, and I will give you an example of how I use it in my YOLO v3 implementation. So at first, I will start with a theory. So the mean average precision, uh, or sometimes uh, simply just referred to as AP, is a popular metric used to measure the performance of models doing document formation and object detection tasks. If you time to time read a new object detection papers, you may always see that authors compare map of their offered methods to our most popular ones. There are multiple deep learning algorithms that exist for object detection like fast recurrent neural networks, faster recurrent ne networks, YOLO, uh, mask recurrent networks, and etc. All of these models solve two major problems, classification and localization. With classification, we need to identify if an object is presented in an image and we need to find out the class of that object. In localization, we predict the coordinates of the bounding box around the object when an object is present in the image. Here, we compare the coordinates of the ground truth and predicted bounding box. While measuring mean average precision, we need to evaluate the performance of both the classification as well as localization of using bounding boxes in the image. For object detection, we use the concept of intersection over union. Uh, this means that we are uh, measuring overlap between two boundaries. So actually, we use that to measure how much our predicted boundary overlaps with the ground truth bounding box. The ground truth is the real object boundary. Here in this slide, you can see that ground bounding box is ground truth and grid bounding box is predict predicted box. In simple terms, intersection over union tells us how well predicted and ground truth bounding box overlap. You will see that in my code we can set a threshold value for IOU to determine if the object detection is valid or not. So for example for COCO AP is the average over uh, multiple intersection over unions. This means that the minimum IOU is considered a positive match. So actually in COCO the AP means that AP corresponds to the average intersection of union in range from 0.5 to 0.95 with a step size of 0.05. So for COCO implementation, AP is average over 10 IOU levels on 80 categories. So as I said, it starts from 0.5 and ends up at 0.95 with a step size of 0.05 and here are some other metrics collected from the coco dataset and here is the image you can see and for more information you can re read on a link and i'll post this to my text version tutorial and because my tutorial series is related to yolo v3 object detector here we can see the results from YOLO V3 paper and at the end at the last line you can see that YOLO V3 and it's AP, AP50, AP75 and AP small, medium, large and so on. Here for example in this figure AP75 means that these are results for IOU 0.75 and map mean average precision is the average of AP. In some contexts, we compute the AP for each class and average them, but in some contexts, they mean the same thing. For example, under the COCO context, there is no difference between AP and MAP. I can quote one line from a COCO website. So they tell that AP is averaged over all categories. Traditionally, this is called mean average precision. So we make no distinction between AP and MAP and likewise R and MAR and assume the difference is clear from context. Coming back to my tutorial, let's get back to the beginning where we need to calculate MAP. 
So first we need to set a threshold value for intersection over union to determine if the object detection is valid or not. So let's say we set IRU 0.5, it's, this is mean that we are use a default value. If IRU is more than 0.5, we classify the object detection as true positive. Otherwise, it's wrong detection and we classify it as false positive. Uh, when ground truth is presented in the image and the model failed to detect the object, we classify it as false negative. And the last one is true negative. True negative is every part of image where we did not predict an object. But this metric is not useful for object detection and we ignore it in our implementation. So if we set an IOU threshold value to 0.5, we'll calculate map 50. If we set IOU 0.75, then we'll calculate map 75. Sometimes we can see this a little bit different, but actually this is the same. So we use a precision and recall as a metric to evaluate the performance. Precision and recall are calculated using true positive, false positive and false negative. As you can see from this slide, there is one difference in precision and recall. As you can see, it only changes uh, from false positive to false negative. That's it. To get map, we should calculate precision and recall for all the objects presented in the images. It also needs to consider the confidence score for each object detected by the model in the image. Consider all of the predicted bound boxes with a confidence score above a curtain threshold. Bounding boxes above their threshold value are considered as positive boxes and all predicted boxes below the threshold value are considered as negative. So the higher the confidence threshold is, the lower map will be, but will be more confident with accuracy with higher threshold. So how we actually calculate general AP? It's quite simple for each query we can calculate corresponding AP. A user can have as many queries as he likes against his label dataset. The map is simply the mean of all the queries that the user made. To see how we get AP, you can check what's AP function on my GitHub repository. So when we have a precision and recall list, we simply call a simple loop formula. And we run that uh, formula for all classes we use. Later I will show you for this formula on my GitHub repository. And to calculate the general AP for the Coco dataset, you, we must loop the evaluation function for IOU nine times. Here is the formula from Wikipedia. As you can see, I simply copy it, so it's quite blurry, but don't worry. It's everything quiet. Here, n will be nine, and ap will be sum of all these values from ap50 to ap95. This might take a while to calculate these results, but this is the way how we need to calculate the map. So now, let's move to my practical YOLO v3 implementation. So, first, you should move to my to my YOLO with the TensorFlow 2 implementation on GitHub. And of course, I'll leave a link on my text version tour. And there is a file called evaluate map. The whole evaluation function is done in this script. So actually, I can open the script. And as I said before, we simply call a one loop. So here it is for, for i in list. We call this and we sum all average precision metrics. We calculate. That's it. This, this is all the magic happens here. So while writing this evaluation script, I focused on the Coco dataset to make sure it will work on it. So in this tutorial, I'll explain how to run this code to evaluate the YOLO v3 model on Coco dataset. So first, to reproduce my results and test everything on Coco dataset, first you should download the Coco validation dataset from, from, from this link. I open at this cocodataset.org and I go to dataset downloads and there is validation images and training images. Of course, I will leave direct links to download them and of course you can download uh, training files but it's not recommended it's around 20 gigabytes of size and 
of course why you need to train all model on coco if you already have it pro it so that's my strange idea for you but it's up to you so i have here on desktop the whole repository i was working on Okay, here's my eighth tutorial, I have it on desktop. Here I created a Cocoa folder in model data and here is the three files, of course. And here I created uh, two text annotation files for you so you don't need to worry about them. So here is a validation uh, file and here is a training file but I won't open it because it's quite large and we don't care about that. I'm not sure why there is, uh, I think I need to remove this, but doesn't matter right now. And here is uh, my Coco name. And of course, here is all the validation images from Coco dataset. And we can see, and as you can see, it links to this Coco val and image and so on. So it's everything here. You need to only download validation on tra or training dataset. So next, if you download uh, my repository, you will need to change the configurations uh, file to reproduce all the results. So first you need to go to Yolo3 configs.py file and here is a train classes line. Here was before MNIST and you need to comment this and change this to Coco Coco names, of course. Here also should be Coco Coco names. If you want to train it, of course, you need to change this train annotation path, but because I'm only validating, I'm not changing this line. And of course, if we would like to validate, we need to change this test annotation path. And here I just left commented, but you will need to change this by yourself. I'm not changing this. I just I'm mentioning this in this video tutorial. Of course, I leave them as it was before so now we have all settings for set for evaluation and now i will explain the evaluation process in a few sentences the whole evaluation process can be divided into three parts of course and i'll open this my script so we call this script and as you can see there is default values there is our iou threshold and score threshold as default, I'll use 0.25, and here is minimum overlap, which is from Pascal Voss 2012. So here at first, it creates a map folder in our local directory, and in this folder, we create a ground truth folder, and where we create a JSON file for every ground truth image bounding box. So, as I said, this will be short. In the second part, most part is done by our YOLO v3 model. I can, uh, where is our model? I can write search. So here, and it runs prediction on every image similar way as in the first part, it creates JSON file for every class we have and puts the detection bounding box accordingly. And in the third part, we already have detected ground truth bounding boxes. I mean, detected and ground truth bounding boxes. So, what is left to calculate the map? So, for each class with uh, what's a p function, which is here. So, after we calculating the average precision for each class, we have results of them, and what is left left is we need to average it and we are say it will receive the map that's quite simple and of course if you would like i can uh, run an example for you so i will open my directory and of course i will open my evaluation map function It will run on my first GPU, so OK. So OK, here I was running it for, I don't know, a lot of times and checking the results, how they change depending on threshold and IOU. And right now I can open terminal and just write a Python evaluate map. And as you can see, let's see, 
Right now it will run a map with threshold of 0.05 and IOU of 050. And of course, I think I think that I will implement this function into the train by function that when we finish training it by default gonna call this function to have evaluate our map of our model. So that's it. I can run this now. And it will take a while, so I'll just wait and come back when it finishes. So I'm back and as you can see, there we have our results here and it finished to measuring the mean average precision. As you can see, it measured average precision for every class. And as you can see, for, for example, airplane is 81%, uh, backpack 31, banana 27, baseball bat EP is 60 and so on. This is 80 Coco classes, which is used here. So actually, these all classes are simply averaged. And as you can see, it receives 55 mean average precision. But keep in mind, this is only with a threshold of 0 0.05. And to be, it's not recommended by me. I recommend you to, to use some kind of precision of 0.25 or even 0.5 in your real time custom model and so on but it is what it is and as you can see it we achieved um, quite similar results as we had as it was published by real yolo 3 paper and i can i can say that my scripts kind of works so that's it for this tutorial part and I did this tutorial because it it's valuable to know how to calculate the mean average precision of our model. You can use this metric to check how accurate is your custom training model with validation data set. You can check how map changes when you add more images to your data set, change threshold or intersection over the union parameter. This uh, mean average precision is mostly used when you want to squeeze as much as possible for a custom model. Uh, I thought about implementing map into the training process to track it on TensorBoard, but I couldn't find an effective way to do that. So if someone finds a way to how to do that effectively, I will accept pull request on my GitHub. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next part, I plan to uh, do a tutorial how to run a uh, YOLO v3 on Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then I will do a tutorial with Android Studio how to run this on your mobile phone. So it's going to be quite fun in the future. And let's see in the next tutorial part. I hope this was useful for you. And please subscribe, like this video, comment if you don't understand something. And see you in our next part. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.